What do you think uh, the last week has done for your football team heading into this one? That'd be hard to say. Um, I think um, there's a little different feel in the building. Uh, I think everybody has taken to uh, Coach Guyton. I think everybody's excited for him. Um, but um, you know, obviously, I think we've got some bumps and bruises healed up a little bit better than what we had before. But uh, it'd be hard to say. I'll know a little bit more, you know, how we adjust to the new offense and things of that nature, uh, or the less offense, I guess would be a better way to say it. Uh, we'll know more about that uh, as the week progresses, I think. Um, so practices are not for viewing for the media this week. Uh, are you wanting to maybe sh have some different looks, you know, spring some stuff on Florida? Well, or we trust you. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It has everything. We, we've had plenty of distractions. I'm just trying to close it in and making it about us this week, to be honest with you. We don't have a problem with you all coming to practice and uh, at all. It's just something that uh, with Kenny and his new role and things of that nature, I just – I'm trying to take all the any type of added pressure that he might have off of him. Coach, you mentioned get some bumps and bruises healed. Is there any chance for Rocket Sanders this week? Well, he's back, so um, we'll see. Uh, we I anticipate him practicing today, but uh, how much he can do, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I would I'll know more about that when I talk to y'all again Wednesday. I'll know more then about that because obviously I don't know where he is physically. Did you watch any football this weekend or did you just kind of get away from it and focus I, on recruiting and stuff? I, I did. You know, we had a great day on Friday. I mean, it was really good to get out and get into high schools and go watch games and things of that nature. Uh, I did. I, I started out watching A&M in uh, South Carolina and uh, headed to watch Georgia, Florida and, and uh, watch that and then Took a little nap and watched the end of the Colorado game. Uh, but uh, it was fun to be a spectator with no no pressure, you know, and no, you know, not having to make any decisions, <laughs> just sat there and have an old cold beer. So it was fun. I imagine most of the football you watch is in a film room with, yeah. you know, fast forward. You probably don't get to watch a whole lot of telecast. How was that? You don't. You know, if you have a night game, you might be able to watch, you know, an 11 o'clock game or something like that. But, you know, it's amazing. You, you, you know, you try to help these kids reach their goal at the NFL and you never see them play. You know, you just don't. Uh, College-wise, uh, it was fun. I mean, those are, those are fun. I see why people are fans of college football. Um, it was a lot of fun, and and uh, I think too, you know, as the week went on last week, Trey, if you you know, I was thinking about it because I had after the uh, game that I went to, uh, I met Jamie down at Hot Springs, and and uh, and I was thinking about um, what transpired in a week's time, you know, and then you can take it back from seven weeks, you know, and what's really transpired over the last seven weeks, and or eight weeks, and, um, you know, we just – we've got a problem that we got to get fixed, you know, but I, from a week ago to where, to where we're sitting today, I feel, I feel good about uh, where we're at. Sam, I think I've got this right. Nudie was in uniform against Mississippi State but didn't play. Is mm -hmm. he going to be full go for you this week? Well, he was full go, you know. He's, he's uh, still trying to – uh, work his way uh, into uh, playing time, you know. But he, he was full go. He was able to play last week. It's just uh, uh, right now he's not starting for us, you know. So Just sticking to, um, with the defense, how do you keep that mojo going that you've got, I guess, from the Mississippi State game previous weeks? How do you carry that after a bye week? Well, I think they just, they'll continue to play hard. Um, uh, it's, it, I, I would think it'd be very, very hard for them to lose their uh, enthusiasm and their luster and their will to play because of the coaches that they have over there. You know, they uh, hold them very accountable, but yet they're very positive and very charismatic with them, and, and they're, they're believing. Uh, hopefully that's what will happen to our offense as well this week, and we'll go out there and have us a really good football game. But I, I think uh, – um, 
you know, there's been games this year where we had opportunity to win uh, or we were ahead or tied and uh, uh, things didn't always go our way, way there on defensively either. So uh, it's really be very hard. It's easy when it's seven to three because you're going, we, we, you know, held them to seven points. You can't score 10 points, but there's been other games too where that's why it's a team game. It's been other games where we've got to play better there as well. So. I don't think I, I, there's no this, this, and this. I think we had a problem. I think the team feels like I'm trying to correct it, and I think they're fine with it. Uh, bye weeks can sometimes be a time where the you know, young guys might flash when you're yeah. not preparing for a specific opponent. Just yeah. curious if anybody maybe had a good week. And we we didn't. Uh, you know, a lot of times I think maybe two years ago we had a freshman or a freshman sophomore young not playing scrimmage. I remember we, got, we had a knee injury in that time, and I'm not laughing about it. We, we did, and I was going, man, I wish we wouldn't have done that now. But um, this week was more of a run-throughs on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we practiced on Thursday. So really it was more about – and it had to be that way because of the new coordinator. Uh, you know, it just changed this week, so we weren't able to quite get the young younger guys in view as much as what we normally would in a bye week. I think, I think you said last week that Chambly was okay after the back injury. Still, he's fine, he's fine this week. Yeah, he's fine. I think him and Dev will, will figure it out this week. Who will be the starter there? They'll both play. Sam, have you ever been on a staff where there was a, a midseason coordinator change? I'm just curious if you have anything to like look mm. back on to kind of help you through this this past week, or do you talk to mentors or anything like that? Man, I don't think I've ever been through a midseason coordinator change. I've had a lot of jobs. Um, I've been through some late season head coaches getting fired. It's terrible, you know. Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's terrible for everybody, fans, players, coaches. Um, but I don't know if I've ever been through that. What, what I wanted to do is make sure that we brought the life back into the program, brought the enthusiasm back into the program, accountable, accountability and I'm not saying we didn't have any of that before because it makes me sound like I'm blaming a guy I'm not I've already spoke about Dan and my respect for him but something has to change you know and uh, so um, I feel like we've done that but I, I, I can't remember ever having a coordinator change during the season to be honest with you and you mentioned simplifying the playbook, condensing yeah. it down. Is that process done now? Now you're focusing in on your set of plays, and what maybe do you know what kind of percentage is like fifty percent of the playbook, or do you know? Man, um, it, we probably cut it down. I don't know if I'm guessing. Maybe thirty percent of it we cut out. Uh, we're trying to do the things we do well, you know, and and. Uh, more specific to what we can do versus how to attack a defense. Now, hopefully they'll combine with checks and RPOs and a way to throw off of that and run off of that. But um, probably about 30% and probably cut another five last night, to be honest with you, because some of the things we had in, we just – I want to be able to do it with – that everybody's uh, – on the same page, blocking the right guys and, and uh, playing as fast as we possibly can with um, ability to have that tempo and all those type things. And uh, so you have to cut your playbook down a little bit because of that. But um, what we're doing, I think we're doing pretty good. And so we cut a little bit out of it last night. Coach, I know we talked about chipping and stuff with the running backs and tight ends in the past. I was curious how you, uh, I guess, assess uh, the pass protection from the running back group to this point in the season. Um, we've got to get better. Um, not not solely just on uh, probably – obviously our worst game was against Mississippi State. Um, but we have to get better there. We also had to put them in less – possibilities to protect as well. I mean, obviously on third down, you've got choices. You know, what kind of protection do you want to use? Um, you know, we'll go six, seven, five, man protection. How do you want to do it? Um, but, you know, Damo has been 
really the biggest back in protection and things of that nature, and we've used him a little bit. But um, it's got to get better, um, and the kids know that as well. Um, but um, Florida certainly has a defensive end that that is really good, and uh, and they have a couple of them. Uh, but uh, number one is exceptional. Got a nice spin move and things. We really have to. We can't let him just wreck our game. That was going to be my next question, I guess. I'm assuming you know you've watched a lot of Florida tape to this point. Just what do you think overall of the Gators? Uh, a lot of team speed. Um, we really want to stay out of third and long. They've got a lot of stuff. Um, so we're we're having to figure out exactly how we're attacking that. We've got an idea of how we think we can win third down. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're a lot like Georgia was, you know, a net um, odd front with four-man front, a lot of field pressure, um, a lot of boundary free safety pressure. Um, third down, a big-time exotic team. Offensively, they want to get the ball to the edge. You know, whether it's stretch, whether it's reverses. I really like what they're doing offensively. They are hiding the football. You know, it's old school, wing T, you know, who has the ball. I mean, it's not wing T, but you get the idea that they they want you to figure out where the ball is a little late and a lot of dressing pre-snap and post-snap. But they're, they're really wanting to uh, – attack the edges, uh, no matter what that might be. A lot of reverses, a lot of jet sweeps. They've got two, at least two, really good running back that they love to run the stretch with, and they're both really good players. Their quarterback, you know, is very accurate. Doesn't throw a lot of deep balls, but the balls that he throws, he's very, very, very accurate, very good player. I don't know. Do you know Billy Napier? How well do you know him? And kind of what He's in his second year. He's obviously trying to get Florida back where they have been yeah. kind of what, what's your take on maybe where they are well, I like Billy a lot um, came up through Louisiana and and uh, uh, did a wonderful job there at the university and and I know a lot of or I know the whole line Rob Sell on the staff and and have a lot of respect for Billy um, and uh, he's got them playing really hard and and uh you know, they've, they've got a good team. There's a heck of a win against South Carolina a couple of weeks ago to come back like that down 10. And, uh, but I have a lot of respect for him. I think the whole coaching community has a lot of respect for Billy. You mentioned, well, you didn't mention him, but their quarterback merch, you know, transfer from Wisconsin. He, he's got 14 touchdowns, only two picks, mm -hmm. you know, 76% completion rate. You could maybe a little more thought, thought on him. Um, a lot of play action, a lot of naked throws, a lot of bubbles, um, uh, not a lot of shots, um, uh, not a lot of long balls, let's say that. And I mean, they, they, they attempt those, but I would say the majority of their passes are within that 10 yard and under. You know, on third, on fourth down against South Carolina, they threw one out there about plus three. They need 11, and the guy just – made a play they've got two they got more but one and three is what wide outs are really really good players and and um uh, one of them's a freshman i believe the number one and uh um but they're not asking him uh to me to sit in there and read the full field all the time now they do obviously but to me they run a lot of things that um he can do and he does well and uh, therefore, they're not putting him in a lot of positions where he's throwing it up for grabs. Uh, with, with kind of the knock-on effect of Kenny being OC, just has Derek? I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. With uh, Kenny being OC, d d has Derek done anything different with the receivers so far, or do you plan to do anything different with them? No, I think Kenny uh, is uh, uh, involved with the receiver play as well, but. Uh, no, not to this point. I mean, we're we're trying to cut down some of the things that we do so they can do them a little bit faster. But um, no, not I don't think anything's different. And then you find uh, we talked about how you have some time to watch some football this week, and any time for personal reflection that you weren't, you know, preparing for a specific opponent. 
Uh, oh, I think you do that daily and maybe hourly and what's the word, minutely? I don't know what it is. I think you do that. Anytime that you are, are in a situation that we're in, I mean, you either give up or you try to figure out how to get out of it, you know. And so, yeah, I think there's a lot of reflection uh, on what we – what we've done right, what we've done wrong, how to correct it, how to get better, those things of that nature. But the key is, are we fighting like hell to change it or are we not? And I can promise you that we we are, and we means everybody in the building and the players. Hey, um, so I know you went to the Swamp in 13 here, but you didn't go in 20. So I'm wondering how many times you've been there and just kind of what you think of that. You know, we so. went over, played them at, when I was at Western Michigan. Uh I think when I was that single year at Tennessee, they came to Tennessee. Uh, I haven't been many times in the Swamp because obviously when I was at Georgia, we played them over in Jacksonville. Uh, I can't remember. Northern Illinois, we went there. Um, but I can't remember uh, going there much. You know, I had COVID the last time we went there, so I didn't get to go. Um I, I think I, I'm sure I'll remember something when I leave about when I went over there, but I, there hadn't been many times, I don't think. What's about the bye week for your defense? It was playing so well before the bye. Now a chance to get some guys freshened up a little bit. That's got to give them an extra push for the last yeah, month of the 100% season. Yeah, 100 correct. Uh, um, there's a lot of confidence there. Uh, I, I will say this: this is a good offense that we're getting ready to play. A good offensive line. Uh, Really good receivers, quarterback, running backs are good, and a really good uh, offensive schematic. Uh, so we've got our work cut out for us. We can't let them get to the edge. And uh, uh, But I, you're right, I think we'll be as healthy as we've been on both sides of the ball all year. And I guess that's what bye weeks are for. Um, I think we're – I think we. I don't know, you guys have to look it up, but I think we've done well off of bye weeks. I don't think we had one our first year, but I, I, I think we won the last – or the other two, the, the buys. I think we did. I think we beat Mississippi State here one year, and then last year I think we went to Auburn after the bye week. So we've had some good success off of off the bye weeks. Uh, how KJ is feeling, I guess, is really important for maybe the state of your whole team. What, How has he dealt with the change? What have you seen from him this last week? Well, I think he's excited about the change. I mean, no, again, no disrespect to – anybody on that but I think he's excited about that uh, um, I think he's he's a guy that we probably needed to take uh, some offense off of uh, where he could play faster and, and be more confident with what he's doing um, but he's healthy and and uh, uh, you know uh, becoming I think even the last week he I think his leadership skills uh, um, were better I think, you know, any time a guy opens his mouth and talks, I think he's got to back it up. And to me, that's what a leader does. And uh, if you're not wanting to lead, you probably don't talk because you're not wanting to back up what you say. And uh, I, he was more vocal this week, than, uh, last week, than what he had been. Yeah, Coach, um, do you think Rocket was kind of targeting this game a little bit, maybe as a motivational factor to get back for his home state? Man, you know, I don't know. You know, Trey, that's a good – Good thought. Um, I really don't know. I, you know, uh, in all honesty, I think he he was just hurt, and this was good timing, you know, or ended up being good timing, being able to go back to Florida. Um, not a whole lot of Florida players on your roster. I think right. you got five scholarship players, two yeah, that you yeah. recruited, two pretty yeah. good running backs, Augusta and Rocket. Mm -hmm. You guys plan to get out and look at players in, the, in Florida or probably not this week uh, you know again I think with the change everything kind of changed a little bit and we're trying to keep everything in house um, um, so I won't let my or that we won't be out uh, recruiting this weekend because again it's an early game as well and you know, I mean, we we got to do everything we do to put the best product on the field that we that we can and uh, so I think with all of what we're doing, we're just trying to make about us and we're going to kind of 
stay in a submarine this week. Is that a state, though, that I guess just because of the background with, play, with coaches on the staff that you guys don't hit a whole lot or um, just focus on other areas? Well, I think, I think you know, obviously you know where, where I like to recruit. And then to be perfectly honest with you, I think Georgia probably – was our Florida, to be perfectly honest with you. And just because of the relationships we had with the high school coaches, and we have several different coaches that have Georgia, not necessarily ties or, you know, you understand what I'm saying? So I didn't know if we spot Florida, um, where we really, really recruit Georgia, you know, and I also thought that you know, the better the programs are doing in the state, the harder, it, you know, and Florida State's doing really good and Florida's doing good now and, and Miami's doing good. So, um, you know, we're in the state of Georgia. Everybody goes in there too, but Georgia can only take so many guys, you know, and so that's why we went that way and that's why our that's our feeling on Florida. Uh just curious with, with Kenny, I know he's coaching quarterbacks now, but his experience at receiver, now being the offensive coordinator, how is are there any ways where he can maybe start to maximize the, the wide receiver unit now that he's calling plays? Well, he knows them better than anybody, you know. So um, I think targets for, for whom he thinks are his best players is going to be big for us. And uh, – um, and he knows them better than anybody, so he should be able to know what routes they can run the best and wh where they can get open and and uh, we can get it to them faster. You know, you watch tape and and uh, you look at a lot of different things on tape, but um, what you might or might not look at is uh, how fast the quarterback gets rid of the football. And, uh, you know, sacks can have a lot to do with – protection have a lot to do with running backs it can have a bunch to do with wide receivers and it can have a bunch to do with the quarterback and uh, so we've got to speed up to all that process uh, we hope to protect better in those things of that nature but we also have to be able to move the pocket add different um, chips and add and and do it in a game and and uh, so there's a lot to be a lot to be said about all that kind of stuff how would you say J Josh Braun's played? He's obviously going back to Florida where yeah. he played a couple seasons. Kind of your thoughts on his season so far? Josh is tough. Uh, he's played hurt uh, quite a bit this year. I think he'll be as healthy as he had. I'm sure it'll be an uh, exciting uh, point for him to go back to Florida and and uh, be able to play in that game. He's a quiet kid, so he wouldn't ever say anything. But uh, obviously anybody that transfers from somewhere and they go back and have an opportunity to – play they want to play well uh, maybe a little extra uh, uh, motivation there um, Josh has had a good season for us uh, Lord knows where we'd be if he didn't come in here and uh, I look for him to continue to improve each week and 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 he still has two years after this to help us uh, on further than that Coach, I think last week you mentioned that Kenny was maybe more comfortable on the sideline, but I saw in Kyle's notes he's going to be in the booth. Is that right? And just kind of what went to that decision? Thanks, Coach. <laughs> what other – where are the notes so I could know what's – Kyle could probably get you some. He – he uh, – <laughs> he uh, – I don't know when he told Kyle, but he told me uh, that he wasn't that comfortable. Uh, he didn't think he'd be comfortable on the sideline after he initially thought that's where he needed to be. And I think part of that has to do with Keith, you know, who asked somebody asked me about it, Derek. And uh, so I think part of that had something to do with it. But I think he, he'll be – any coordinator to me that's especially young will be much better upstairs. But I gave him that opportunity to decide what he wanted to do, and he's changed to want to be in a box. And you mentioned Nudie is, is second team now. Did he, is it anything he needs to do to get back to first team, or is he well, just kind of got Wally Pip? Well, I just think, yeah, I mean, I think there's probably something to be said for that. But Nudie's a good player, and I, I look for him to continue to compete. And, and uh, you know, it just is what it is right now. But I, he, he certainly can earn that spot back and, and I expect him to – I expect him. He's a great kid, and I expect him to battle his butt off to get it back. Thank <laughs> you.